The Bernina Industrial Sewing Machine is a really good machine because it has the best of both worlds by having the heavy duty nature of an industrial sewing machine. However, it has the stitch options of a domestic sewing machine. Um, so these machines, because it's an industrial machine, it's gonna stay set up. You don't have to thread it and unthread it every lesson. Um, so let's have a look. So you've got two cones like your industrial sewing machine. The left cone is what stays thread up and you can see it here for your top thread. The right hand cone is to fill a bobbin. So it doesn't need to be connected to anything if you're just doing your top thread. Sometimes it will be connected in to fill the bobbin and that's okay, it can just stay there while you're using it. So your cone sits on there and then it comes up and it hooks back to front through this thing here and then it comes down and hooks in there. That is a hook so you can pull it through. You don't have to thread it and then it's coming through here and it pops out there. It comes down under this hook and again that's a hook you can just kind of tuck it under and then pull it up. Then it comes up to the thread take up. So the thread take up you can turn with your hand wheel and that moves that if it's um, not in the right place. This is not a hook, you do have to thread it through right, right to left. So it's going that way. And then it comes down and hooks behind here. If you can see that. Um, and then that creates your end shape that we've got. That's similar to pretty much every machine. Um, so you've got your hook down underneath. Then once you've gone through this hook here, so that's the opening of the hook on that side, then it goes through your needle front to back. So the other sewing machines the needle goes side to side, so you have to thread it left to right. But because this is kind of a mixed sewing machine, it's got a domestic um, facing needle, which is front to back. And then that is your top thread. To access the bobbin, you go through this plate here because like a other industrial machine, the bobbin sits underneath. So. Once you've practiced a bit, you can do this without opening a flap, but I'm just putting my hand under the table and pushing it up and then along. So the bobbin sits there where my finger is. So it's facing back to front. So if I have a fiddle, find the lever, I can pull the bobbin out and then that's ready to go. So this bobbin case is um, slightly different to the other bobbin cases that we have. So you have to use the bobbin in the bobbin um, case that is in this machine. You can't put any other bobbins in the bobbin case. So it's, it's a lot thinner, you'll see. To get the bobbin out of the bobbin case for this one here, you can just tip it out. Um, you can see there how thin that is so to put it back in um you're going to do the check to make sure it's running clockwise so thumb and index finger pull the thread and you can see it's running clockwise then grab your bobbin case you want to have the big hole that's the big gap there facing upwards that's going to go in and then you've got your slit and your hole there so you're going to bring it to the slit. So it's a very, very tiny slit there. And then you can kind of slide it along the plate and it will pop out of the hole. And to put this back in the machine, you have to put your arm, I normally use my left arm, underneath the table. So you've got your table your left arm goes underneath the table. You want the big gap facing upwards. And you're going to reach under 
So there I am with the big gap facing upwards. I, with my middle finger, have a feel around and find the that knob that's poking out because the whole of the bobbin case and the bobbin in the middle there slots onto that bit that's poking out there. So big gap facing upwards, gonna slide it on, give it a wiggle and click it in. So I'm just giving it a bit of a shake with my index finger to make sure that it is stuck in there. So that is all ready to go. Then you would do your thread take up. So as you would a normal machine, you've got your top thread there. And I'm holding that loosely. I'm using my hand wheel and I'm doing a full circle. So all the way down, all the way up. Once it's all the way up, I can pull it and it will bring the bobbin thread. And I have two threads ready to go. Once you are all set up and ready to go, you can turn the sewing machine on. So always check that it is on at the wall. It's not always on at the wall. And then to turn this machine on, it's down under here. So press it on and it makes this sound. Nothing's happening, it's just the motor. So, um, on this sewing machine, you have got a manual foot lever at the back. And this one here, so that lifts the foot. But for industrial sewing machines, you don't want to use the manual lever, so have that down. You want to use the knee lever here. So when you are sitting at the machine, you need to be nice and close, so you can use your knee to lift the foot. And get your fabric, so lift the foot, put your fabric in. And then when you are ready to go, so this is just test fabric, so it's always good to get in the process of test fabric. Let's have a look at these dials. So this is your stitch width. So because we're doing a straight stitch, we don't want any width. So that if you had it like towards, you know, the higher you go, the wider it goes, which is like a zigzag. So for zero width, just for a straight stitch, you want it at zero. This is to make a buttonhole, don't worry about that. And then this is your length and your back tack. So this is similar to an old domestic machine where to do a back tack you like lift it up and it just like if you let go it just goes back down but you turn the dial to adjust the stitch length so a normal stitch length would be about a, a three which is where that is it's really hard to show you on the video about three um and that's just how long the stitch is so when we start going we're going to go forward a bit it's good practice to hold those back threads as you start because it's very annoying if you start sewing and the thread pops out of the needle so hold your thread or just put your finger down on it like that and give it a couple stitches then with your right hand you hold it up I'm videoing I would have another hand on this fabric and that's gonna take you backwards and then you let go and that should just go back down to where you had the dial set and then you can do your stitching. And then once you get to the end, you'll do your back tack again. So up, back tack a bit, down, and then you're all done. This machine can go very, very fast, so be careful. When you're all done your sewing, use your hand wheel so you're turning this bit, not that bit. And it can be really stiff. So turning your hand wheel kind of got to grab the whole thing, get your needle out of the fabric, knee up and give it a pull. If you've got more than one thread poking out the bottom, it means that your hand wheel hasn't done a full cycle. Oops. So let me show you. So if I've got, I've got three there at the moment poking out and if I just pull the fabric delicately and turn my hand wheel, it kind of releases that extra one and now I only have two coming out. 